everyone, Floyd here, and we're going to continue our uh, gameplay of Sam and Max Save the World. Where we last left off, we uh, electrified Myra Stump, we stopped the toy mafia that was being run by an actual mole, and right now Max is in a uh, presidential debate with a giant stone Abraham Lincoln. Okay, uh... Continue episode four. Abe Lincoln must die. And we had just started this. So, now that there's no president right now, let's take a look and see what's inside the White House. Maybe we can grab some stuff. All right. Let's see. Uh, camera. Hi, America. It's me, Max. Remember, a vote for me is a vote for prosperity, alacrity, and the tyranny of my furry white iron fist. Oh, Thank dear. <laughs> Do we really want to get Max as president? <laughs> really? Hi, America. It's me, Max. Remember, a vote for me is a vote for prosperity. Oh, Thank okay. You. He's just repeating himself. So pretty much he's going to be a tyrant. A very chaotic tyrant. It's uh, a stack of pithy campaign slogans. Slogans. The buck stops here. Thousand points of light. And I did not have sex with that woman. Well, I did, but I didn't inhale. E Excuse me, Max? Pardon? Sir, there's something we need to know about you. <laughs> oh, dear. All right, what else is in here now? Uh, what's on the desk? Oh, the national budget. Step away from the national budget, sir. That's for the president's eyes only. Oh, shoot. You're in here now. Why are you here, Super Bowl? Oh, no. Not this guy again. Hey, it's our pal, Super Bowl! One and the same, sir. Well, stand aside, pal. No can do, sir. Orders. Uh, let us into that war room. Let us into that room. No can do, sir. Orders. Until I hear from Chuckles, my superior officer, I'm to guard this door. Uh, do you like this job? Are you really happy with this line of work? Finest job in the world, sir. Don't you ever just want to take off for some personal time? Would love to, sir. Got a wife at home. Intel suggests Super Bowl Jr. is starting first grade. Summer home with plenty of doors I could guard in my time off. Aww. Solid oak. Good doors. Strong doors. Ah, so he wouldn't mind a day off. Uh, we'll find a way past you. Want to hear a really boring story? So boring that I fall asleep and let you enter the war room? Oh, so you've heard it already. I stand guard over doors all day, sir. Takes a lot to bore me. Hmm. Clever. We'll be back. Roger that. You are going to be a hard nut to crack. All right. So, since I can't get anywhere near the desk still, let's head back out. And talk to the giant stone Abraham Lincoln. Oh, and there's more cue cards. It's the cue cards for Lincoln's speech. I'm glad that I've been given one more life to give for my country. Huh. Oh, I can switch them. All right, make a note of that. Oh, a flyer. It's Lincoln's campaign flyer. I want you, honest, dedicated, over a century of experience. Abraham Lincoln is your man. Ah. Sybil wanted someone uh, experienced. So let's talk to the president. Well, not president, but Lincoln first. 
before we go talk to Sybil. Mr. Lincoln, as a candidate for office, my pal Max would like to engage in a thoughtful discussion of the key issues. Followed by a round of spiteful mudslinging. Hmm, I see. Well, this is a bit irregular. As you're well aware, I'm the most beloved president in history. So I just assumed I'd be running unopposed. Oh no, you didn't! You ain't all that! I freed the slave! I was star of a popular television sitcom! I'm on the penny! I was on TV! Now, gentlemen, we can resolve this like adults through my- Oh my god, the president's head's in there! <laughs> Very well, then. In the spirit of democracy, I say, bring it. And it's a beautiful All right. day on the White House lawn as we bring you the first in a series of debates for this emergency election for U.S. President. In the Republican corner, we have the giant animated statue of Abraham Lincoln. And representing the random violence and destruction party, there is the hyperkinetic rabbit-like creature known as Max. Acting as completely impartial moderator for the debates will be Sam. The candidates hmm. are ready, so let's listen in. I didn't know, uh... Well, not I didn't know. Maybe it's just too far back for me to remember. I didn't know Abraham Lincoln was on Republic. Huh. Uh, let's talk about the issues. How do you plan to solve the problem with toxic waste? How do you plan to solve the problem of toxic waste? I'm glad that I've been given one more life to give for my country. And Lincoln uh, is once again using his trusted campaign slogan, which is pleasing the crowd, but having no effect on his poll ratings. Oh, all right. Oh, okay. That's enough for that's now. Enough for now. This is why I'm I need coming. to switch the cue cards. I'm ready for anything. Uh, time out. Time out. Max has to uh, visit the little candidate's room. I'm drunk with power, but it just goes right through me. Okay, switch cue cards. Cause there was one that said free home delivery. The one I got by uh. Two wrongs don't make a right. But three rights make a left. And plus five points if you know where that reference comes from. Uh, what was I going to say? Uh, Hugh Bliss had the sign outside his uh, shop that said free home delivery. So maybe that's a way to get rid of the toxic waste, quote unquote. I'm glad that I've been given one more life to give for my country. Okay, maybe I have to manually put it on there. Uh, yeah, free home delivery. Free home delivery. There we go. Let's try this. It's time for another in this ongoing series of debates between Abraham Lincoln and Max. We turn you over to our impartial moderator, Sam. Okay, let's try this again. Let's talk about the Mr. issues. Lincoln, I'd like you to tell the voters your stand on some of the tough issues. Very well. So, problem, with problem with toxic waste. Toxic waste. Free home delivery. Maybe. Ooh, an effective but Oh, yes, that worked. Candidate Lincoln, and the crowd did not like that idea one bit. Let's see how it affected the polls. Nader? What the hell's Nader doing in this mix? <laughs> okay. Uh, what other cards do I have? Pithy campaign slogans. All right, so he took that one out. Uh, what else was there? I'm glad that I've been given one more life to give for my country. Okay, what else? Two wrongs don't make a right. I think I have to find more cards? Well, let me talk to him more. Maybe I can figure it out. Alright, uh, talk about the issues. It's time for our lightning round. Mr. Lincoln, I'm going to name some of the tough issues facing our country today. I'd like you to sum up your stand on those issues in a few concise words. Well, all right. I'm afraid this will have to be completely off the top of my head, as I have nothing prepared. Besides your cue cards, where do you stand on religion and schools? Where do you stand on religion and schools? Two wrongs don't make a right. Yeah, I'm gonna have to find more cards. Just came down against both religion oh! Education. Wow, that's gotta hurt him in the polls. Oh, okay, that worked. Two wrongs don't make a right. S somehow. Alright. Uh, talk about the issues. It's time for our lightning round. Mr. Lincoln, I'm going to name some of the tough issues facing our country today. 
I'd like you to sum up your stand on those issues in a few concise words. Well, all right. I'm afraid this will... All right, uh, how would you describe your tax plan? How would you describe your tax plan? Two wrongs don't make And he make still a reads right. the sign. And that doesn't really make a bit of sense, so... Okay. So I need to figure something out with taxes. Now. Uh, the nation... Bleh, the nation demands family values. Do you have any? Mr. Lincoln, perhaps you'd like to speak about the importance of family values. Of course. A strong family unit is the rock upon which our society is built. It's easy today in this age of your blinged out horseless carriages and racy daguerreotype magazines to <laughs> believe that honesty and fidelity are outdated concepts. But I stand proud. I have been completely faithful to my lovely wife, Mary Todd, for over seven score years. I've never even looked at another woman. Uh, let's hear your prepared statement. Mr. Lincoln, the networks are looking for a soundbite. Would you care to share a few words with us? <clears throat> Thank you. That floating this head is so distracting. That will be remembered for centuries to come. Today is the day we return America to greatness. I stand here at the steps of the White House, not above the people, but with the people. Only one man can lead the nation through this troubled time. I, Abraham Lincoln, am that man. The time to act is now. Thank you. I said basically the same thing. Alright. Uh, time out. Time out. Max has a therapist's appointment he can't miss. Oh. I think we're on the verge of a real breakthrough. He sees a therapist? Really? Max? Wow! All right, so what can we do about the tax? Free home delivery. That doesn't work, because we already used that. I'm glad that I've and been given one. That doesn't work either. Uh, what else? Uh, post no bills. Hmm. Was there any more cards I can grab on the inside? see no all right let's go to Sybil and give her that form Whee! where are we going Sam back to the office back to the office and also try and keep an eye out for some kind of sign that can uh, help with the whole tax thing for Lincoln. One way, dead end. Hmm. Oh, there are some posters in the back. Maybe that'll work. Okay, Sybil. Have a gander at this. What's this? A new application? Yeah, it's uh, for a friend of ours. Let's see. Not THE Abraham Lincoln. He's tall, distinguished, loves the theater. Been dead for 150 perfect. years. That chump doesn't have half my cute, fluffy marketability. Do you think your computer can find him a date? Computer? Nothing. This guy sounds perfect for me. Oh, but he didn't leave his phone number. Next time you see him, give him my number. I'd love to meet him. Hmm. Okay. So I have to have another little chat with Abraham Lincoln. Also, I don't think a uh, partnership with her and a giant stone statue of Abraham Lincoln eh, it's not going to work very well. Uh, what do these say? Oh, give me all you got. Maybe this will work. Give me all you got. It's the Army's new recruiting slogan. It's a lot better than their old one. What are you, chicken? Gonna cry now, baby? Apparently, there's no room in the military budget for quality adhesives. All right, so let's grab this. All right, that should take care of the tax issue. And, uh, knock that out. 
So let's head back. Where are we going, Sam? Uh, back to the White House. We're off to the White House. Oh boy! Okay. Put up that new poster. Oh, and I want to see the president's <laughs> severed head. It's the severed head of the president. I yearn to hold it aloft and turn giant sea atrocities to stone. You're thinking of Medusa's head. Oh yeah, I always get those two heads confused. One head is loaded with snakes. I don't think you can get that confused, buddy. But uh, even though that thing is a puppet head, it is still freaky looking. Okay. Uh, give me all you got. Give me all you got. Nice. Uh, talk about the issues. It's time for our lightning round. Mr. Lincoln, I'm going to name some of the tough issues facing our country today. I'd like you to sum up your... St well, all I'm afraid this will... Okay. Describe the How tax plan. You describe your tax plan. Give me all you got. And there it is. One shocker of an economic strategy, which even Democrats are calling a trifle excessive. That had to have hurt him in the polls. Uh, Lincoln and Max are actually neck and neck. Max needs a little bit more of a bump. Okay, uh, we found you a woman. Mr. Lincoln, we've picked out a single lady friend who would be just perfect for you. She has a job and still has all her own teeth. Let me give you her number so you can give her a call. Ain't no reanimated president too big to appreciate a booty call. Know what I'm saying? <laughs> what? The idea is preposterous. I've been happily married for over 150 years. I would never consort with another woman. Oh, I see. So the rumors are true. What oh, rumors? dear. <laughs> oh, okay, so... Time out. Time out. We have Sybil's number, but Lincoln isn't going to play ball with us. So, why don't we do this? A way to mimic his voice. And I think that's right Mr. on the money. Would you like to say a few words to the audience? <clears throat> Thank you. This is a date that will be remembered for centuries to come. Today is the day we return America to greatness. I stand here at the steps of the White House, not above the people, but with the people. Only one man can lead the nation through this troubled time. I, Abraham Lincoln, am that man. The time to act is now. Thank you. I've heard better addresses from the 411 operator. What did you just say? Hey, Snap. Lincoln! Captain Ahab called. He wants his beard back. I'm gonna <laughs> slap you silly, you little punk. Save it for the debate, Max. Oh, Max has an unlimited supply of sass. Okay. So, we need to go back Where to the office. Going, and use our phone. Shotgun! Okay, let's hope, uh, us using our little bow, oh, shoot, I never picked up our bug friend, didn't we? Crud, look at my items. Yep. We gotta go back. Damn it. <laughs> I thought the bug would automatically go back to me. Ah. I am gonna be running your car into the ground, Sam. I am so sorry. Where are we going, Sam? Back to the White House to get We're a stupid bug. House. Oh boy! Okay. Pick up the bug. Now go back to the office. Where are we going, Sam? 
Back to the office. Shotgun! Okay. Now we use our phone. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> A little coffee today. Not coffee as in the drink, but coughing. Okay. Use the organic listening device on the phone. Not on Sam. On the phone, please. There we go. Who are you calling, Sam? Uh, Sybil. Sybil. Hello? Since we have her phone Abe? number. Is that you? Uh, I, Abraham Lincoln, am that man. I, Abraham Lincoln, am that man. Mmm. This is a... D okay, this is a date that will be remembered for centuries. Obviously, she wants a date, so date's in the name. This is a date that will be remembered for centuries to come. Oh, my. You are a charmer, aren't you? Well, then, Mr. Rail Splitter, where would you like to meet? Uh, let's see. Where? Uh, oh, I stand here at the steps of the White House. I stand here at the steps of the White House. Uh, the time to act is now. The time to act is now. Oh, I love that decisiveness. I'll rush right over. I'm gonna slap you, silly you. <laughs> what? I didn't catch that last part. I will feast on your entrails. Uh -huh. and devour <laughs> your soul. What? Abe? What's going on? Hang up. Uh, see you soon. Gotta go. That... She won't know a thing. Oh, will this automatically trigger? So to sum yep. up, automatically family triggers. values are the bedrock of this nation. Our fidelity, honesty, and loyalty to family is our most sacred asset as Americans. Candidate Max, your rebuttal? <laughs> Yoo-hoo, Mr. Lincoln! Hey, Sybil! I believe we have a question in the audience from someone who is not Candidate Lincoln's wife. Oh, hi, Sam. Hi, Max. Greetings, random harlot! Abe, I'm here! Are you ready for our date? What? I, I've never seen this woman before in my life. But on the phone, you sounded so eager to meet me. Listen to me, America. I did not arrange a date with this woman. Oh, so she's good enough to fool around with, but not to date. Mr. Oh, no. Lincoln, I can't believe you're doing this to me. <gasps> Sybil, <laughs> no! <laughs> okay, now you're still putting a little. <laughs> Family values are caught in trust with career woman. And Max wins. The results from the emergency election are coming in. And it appears that former sitcom star Max has been elected President of the United States. In an unprecedented show of bipartisan solidarity, all of the country's political parties have desperately asked for a recount. Let's cut to the White House lawn to hear candidate Lincoln's address. You've got to be b***ing me. And Lincoln ain't happy. Idiots. Oh my. He's much better than expected. Democracy? <gasps> I'll make you all my hypnotic slaves! <laughs> Max, that robotic Abe Lincoln will enslave the entire East Coast if we don't stop him. Who cares? I'm the president of the U.S. Let's go bomb someone into oblivion. Yay? Not just anyone, Max. Abe Lincoln must die. Yes! Well, so, Max is now president of the United States. God help us all. God help us all. All right, we are now president. Can we get into that war room? Finally, Mr. President, you're here. That's the president? Unfortunately, yes. For anyone these days. Obviously. What's that supposed to mean? It means never mind. Look, Max. What are you all guys the doing here? The soda poppers are here. 
I don't have time for foreign dignitaries. Check out all the cool stuff on my new desk. Uh, hello again, peepers, specs, and wizard. What the heck are you guys doing here? Look, Max, it's our old pal. <clears throat> Look, Grand Imperial Warlord Maximus Optimus, Keeper of the Seven Keys. It's our old pal, the former child star and embarrassing idol semi-finalist, Peepers. That's former child star and embarrassing idol semi-finalist, Governor Peepers. Oh, yeah, I forgot. You guys are governors now, aren't you? Because, uh, Wizard's now governor of West Dakota? You're a governor, too? You're a governor, too? That's right! I got North Dakota! North Dakota, the leftover state! I thought it was North Dakota, still warmer than Saskatchewan. Hey, be nice! We've got a rich and varied history! North Dakota, hope you like snow! I like North snow! North Dakota, come climb all over our big white butte! <laughs> hey. Sorry, I got caught up in the moment. That was clever! <laughs> that was actually very clever. Uh, what's there to do in North Dakota? What's there to do in North Dakota? Plenty! Snowmen, snow angels, snow forts, snowball fights, homemade ice cream, and of course, the majesty of Mount Rushmore! That hasn't been decided yet! Right, I spoke too soon. Uh, what are you doing here? What business do you have in the Oval Office? We need the president to settle custody of Mount Rushmore! Max has the presidential pen. Somewhere. Just tell me where to sign. Great, the problem is solved. But seriously, if you guys see the president, tell him we're waiting. He is the president. <laughs> Max really is the president. Max really is president now. It was in the papers. We haven't been watching the news back in Fargo. We've been so busy with the arms buildup. What was that? Uh, did I say arms buildup? I meant winter paradise toboggan and scrapbooking jamboree. Yeah, that's that's gonna fly over real well with the other two. Also, wasn't there a show called Fargo? So I guess Fargo is in North Dakota. Can't we all just get along? Can't we all just get along? We can if we all just keep quiet and avoid another incident. Honesty is rarely the best policy. All us presidents know that. Ain't that the truth? See you later. So long, peeps. Cause a lot of you are dirty, dirty little liars. Hey, Specs. Hey, Specs. Max, you remember? Hey, Kath. How you doing? Most since I saw you like two hours ago. Max Sama, overseer of the nine cosmic planes. You remember Specs, the other soda popper? We vaguely recognize our loyal subject. What are you guys talking about? Kiss the ring. What? No. The power has gone to his head. Since you, uh, you just popped in, you may want to know that Max is now the president of the United States via legal uh, presidential campaign. <laughs> Game's going pretty good. I'm only about a half hour in. Uh, what are you doing here, Specs, since you're probably fighting with your other two... brothers? What business do you have with the president? We're here to get federal resolution on a dispute. It wouldn't be a dispute if you... If I what? Nothing. Awkward. Oh, and, uh, the giant stone Abraham Lincoln is now on a giant rampage, hypnotizing everyone in the city. That is what you have missed so far in the past half hour. Uh, what have you been up to? What have you been up to? Winning an election. I'm now the governor of South Dakota. Hey, just like Wizard. No, not just like Wizard. I was the first one of us to run for office. <laughs> like you invented it. You just, ah, uh, forget it. Oh, they are, they got bad blood with all of them. Uh, what are you doing as governor? What are you doing as governor? I'm fixing the problems in the state and getting it back to perfect working order. <laughs> Did you know that the Black Hills are really more of a greenish gray? I've got a committee addressing the problem. But what about What's the, the Black Lands? Hills? We're making them even worse. <laughs> sing your theme song. Sing your theme song for us. No, I don't sing that anymore. I want to be respected as more than just a beloved TV celebrity. If it makes you feel better, you were never really that beloved. Thank Sam you. I always watched your show with detached irony. I was just going to say, I don't think anyone likes you, Specs. See you later. Later, Specs. Okay, and Wizard.
Welcome back, Governor Wizard. Here to give another demonstration on soda abuse? That's not funny. <laughs> funny to me. It is funny to me. Why do you want Mount Rushmore? Why should your state get Mount Rushmore? Because they just want it for tourism. But my plan will save lives. It'll become a monument to soda abuse prevention. People will realize that just like Washington, Jefferson, Roosevelt, and the other guy, they Roosevelt. can overcome their crippling addiction to carbonated beverages. George Washington never had a soda addiction. Why do you think he needed false teeth? Okay, I have two questions. First, was the whole false teeth thing really true? And second, I don't think soda was invented that far back in the past. So, surely you can compromise. Why not divide it up equally? That would never work. It's not even. Each of you could get a third of Roosevelt. I want the mustache. I wanted the mustache. Okay, Max gets Roosevelt's mustache, Specs gets the glasses, Peepers, you get an ear and both nostrils. That just leaves me with the forehead. All right then, Wizard, we'll throw in Crazy Horse, but that's my final offer. It's not even finished. Crazy Horse? This will never work. It's just like last time. Uh, so, West Dakota, huh? How did West Dakota become a separate state? The three of us ran for governor together. We got along so well during the campaign, and we were all such former TV celebrities that all three of us won. The voters realized they'd elected three governors for only two states. That's when the unpleasantness began. You, you don't hold an election for two states at the same time. That's why everyone has a primary at a different time. <laughs> to avoid crap like this. What was the unpleasantness? Was the unpleasantness. We fought for a long time about how to divide up the states. There was almost a war, but we divided Ooh, everything war? fairly and all agreed that Mount Rushmore should be in the south. We did not. You, I, what? You? Oh, never mind. Okay, care for a drink? Even though you broke your uh, month-long streak of no soda. Thirsty? Yes. But you're not going to offer me a soda, are you? You know I can't resist them. We wouldn't do that. I we would. Got, let's see here. Orange soda, cola, grape soda, so would Max. Pop, some more orange soda, and tea. Tea, please. We're all out of tea. Soda? <laughs> Why are you doing this? Because it's fun to torment you, you little man. See you later. Dry, whiz man. <laughs> okay, Max is president. Super Bowl. Get the fudge and heck out of my way. Stand aside, pal. The president needs to get into the war room. I'm afraid that's not allowed, sir. Perhaps you didn't hear our advisor. We would like to see our war room. No can do, sir. Orders. What? All right, so he still won't let me in. Roger that. So... Calendar. It's the official United States calendar. Twelve of the hottest Supreme Court justices in their skimpiest, naughtiest swimsuits. Even better, yeah. Max, you can actually change the official date. Oh boy! Presidents don't have that kind of power, do they? They can't dictate what a holiday is for the month. Or what day it is of the month. Uh... Okay, let's see. Beginning of Passover, Easter Sunday, Earth Day... Secretary's Day and Arbor Day. Uh, Passover. It's a holiday. Wait, do I take the sticky note? Yep, there we go. Passover. We now declare today April 3rd, the beginning of Passover. Shalom. Let my people go. Max, are you Jewish? Ooh. Okay, it's a holiday. Get out of here. Hey, soups. Take a vacation. Max says you can take a vacation. We will make an exception just this once. Thank you, sir, but no can do. It's Passover. I'm not a religious man, sir. I wouldn't feel right taking a vacation unless it was a secular holiday. Oh, uh, okay. We'll be back. Roger that. Hmm. Unless it's a secular holiday. Oh, boy! So, Easter Sunday's out. Earth Day and Arbor Day aren't really holidays. They're... Kind of just like special little days. So, Secretary's Day. We now declare today April 26th, Secretary's Day. 
That's supposed to be Administrative Professionals Day. There we go. Wow, Sam. When I picked you for vice president, I didn't know you were such a politically correct, bleeding heart liberal. All right, then. Secretary's Day. Now, will you get out of my way? Hey, Soups. Take a vacation. Frank says you can take a vacation. It's Secretary's Day. I'm not a secretary, sir. Can... Can we make you a secretary? Maybe? We'll be back. Roger that. Uh, let's see... Oh! Wait, what's this? Ribbon. It's the Secretary of Presidential Whimsy Ribbon. Looks like Max can use this to appoint someone as an honorary cabinet secretary. There we go! I only hit the freaking right stick, like, once. It just went right to a ribbon. Okay. Uh, here is your ribbon. You Max, freaking I schmo. Mean, His Excellency El Jefe Maximilian I, Intimidator of the Realm, has a special surprise for you. Better get those handkerchiefs ready. This could get sentimental. Agent Superball, we have decided to reward you for your excellent service to your country. For your unwavering commitment to preventing us from being where we most desperately needed to be. Please tell me if he's Secretary of Doors. To being a constant hindrance in our task. For all these things and more, we now dub thee Superball. Let's see, Secretary of Meats and Cheeses, Secretary of Mysterious Gaseous Emissions, <laughs> Secretary of the Interior, which I'm pretty sure there is, or Secretary in Charge of Guarding the War Room Door. Uh, that's two on the nose. One already exists. It's one of these two I want to do. Secretary of Meats and Cheeses. Secretary of Meats and Cheeses. So we have spoken, so it shall be. Nice. All hail, Max. I'm overwhelmed, sir. I don't know what to say. Now run along to the cabinet meeting. I'm afraid I can't do that, sir. You've got to be... Oh, uh, come on! I still have my orders. Why? Why? Ugh. All right. Now we can look at the big book. Hey, look, Max. It's the presidential discretionary budget. You have $100 million to allocate however you want. What a delightfully random and convenient figure. Did you just say 100 million? Uh... Fund Independence Hall, Fund the Alamo, or Fund Statue of Liberty? Mm, not yet. Alright. I think that's all we can do in here. Let's head back to town and see how Sybil's holding up with the, uh... Public humiliation of being turned down or being pushed away by a giant stone Abraham Lincoln. Where are we going, Sam? Uh, oh, after that rampaging Lincoln. But I doubt bullets are going to do anything. So back to, back the, to office. the office. Shotgun! Hmm. Okay. Sebel, if you need a shoulder to cry on, you got two of them right here, and one of them is the president. Oh, what's this? Carbon-14 dating device. It's Sybil's carbon dating machine. Don't touch that, fellas. It's the only thing keeping me in business. Hmm. Hiya, Sybil. How are things in the world of computer-generated romance? Oh, I'm not doing that anymore. Can you believe that guy? Never mentioning that he was married? Men are such self-centered jerks. Aww. Preach it, girlfriend! So you changed careers again? Yeah, now I'm running a dating service. Um, come again? A carbon dating service. I bought this astoundingly useful machine that tells me how old things are. I usually just cut them in half and count the rings. There's a reason you're not invited to birthday parties anymore. Ew, I gruesome. want a fresh start and a new career to get my mind off that fiasco with Honest Abe. This wasn't my first choice, but I got a good deal on the carving dating equipment online, and I couldn't afford to change my sign. Uh, you're having financial problems? You're having financial problems? I'm afraid so. After my public humiliation with Lincoln, all the applicants for my dating service demanded their money back. Not to mention all the money tied up in pending litigation with the clients who watched Max's dating video. Oh dear. I stated very clearly up front that viewer discretion was advised. Believe me, I would love to just close up shop for a while and Max, take a vacation. Max, what video did you Forget make? Honest Dave and all the lawsuits. 
It was a wardrobe malfunction. Oh, but unless I oh, get a major oh. windfall, I have to hope the carbon dating business takes off. Uh, how does carbon dating work? How does carbon dating work? I don't know. Something about carbon fourteen and half lives and radiation. I'm impressed with your detailed scientific knowledge. Very professional. That's the beauty of it. I don't really need to know anything. I just aim my little machine at something and it tells me how old it is. Allow me to demonstrate. This tiki is, oh my gosh, it's, it's 2,000 years old. This is fantastic. Old is good? Absolutely. Yeah, for antiques. I can have my office put on the National Register of Historic Places. I might even get a grant. I'd be rich. Uh, can we borrow your carpet dating machine? See you around, Sybil. Uh, Hi, no. Sybil. What's new? I must Nothing hit a wrong button. Here. Can we borrow your carpet dating borrow machine? Carbon dating machine? No way. That machine is still my only chance to take care of my money problems. Unless I get a grant, since I'm now on the National Register of Historic Places. There's no way I'm letting it out of my sight. Uh, who needs a carbon dating service? Who could possibly need a freelance carbon dating service? Plenty of people. Freelance archaeologists, independent historians, rogue paleobotanists. It's also naughty fun for your next bachelorette party. And now that Antiques Ooh. Thunderdome is getting so popular, business is bound to pick up. Antiques Thunderdome? The show where common everyday people bring random junk from around the house to a giant steel cage match and engage in a no-holds-barred appraisal to the death? That's the one. Now everybody's convinced they have some priceless treasure in their attic and their home will be declared a historic monument. Okay, you so want a grant. Want and I think Max has the power now to do that. If I can, uh, move funds to her? I'm pretty sure that's how that works. Where are we going, Sam? Back to the White House. We're off to the White House. To push boy. taxpayers' money on some stupid 2,000-year-old tiki. <laughs> okay. Please tell me Sybil is on here. Uh, oh! Yes, it is! Sybil Pandemic's office. Fun Sybil. I think we just made her very, very happy. Heck, if I managed to get a grant for something, that would make me very happy. Where are we going, Sam? Back to the office. Shotgun! Sybil, you got free money. You want to share it with us? Hmm. Sybil left the door unlocked. She's probably she bailing it up on some tropical island on the taxpayer's dime. I bet she's getting abducted in some sleazy nightclub, forced to do unspeakable things for a power-mad despot before narrowly escaping his volcano top lair with only one of her kidneys left. Don't be such a pessimist, Max. Sorry, Sam. It's just no fair. We're stuck here working, and she gets to have all the fun. She works her butt off, too. Cut her some slack. You guys have fun with your job. I can take the dating device, maybe? It's Sybil's carbon dating machine. Yes, I can. Okay, so. I want to take a look at this tea. Hmm, Sybil must have read her machine wrong. It says this tiki is only ten years old. I thought that price tag on the bottom looked suspicious. Ha! And yet she still gets all that money. Uh, what else can I point it at? Uh, the fox? It's eight years old. Poor little guy was probably heading to his eighth birthday party when he got shot, stuffed, mounted, and sold in a tacky souvenir store. No, he's got that haunted look about him. I bet he offed himself and donated his body to taxidermy. You see the bright side in everything, Max. Huh. Alright, I don't think there's anything else I could really scan in here, so, let's head to Bosco's.
Because I remember when discussing with him, they were talking about hot dogs, and they were saying like how old they were because they stunk. Maybe there's something to do with hot dogs. You are Russian right now. That is a very fickle line. You're a walking, good friend. Alright. Hot dogs. How ancient are they? Well, Bosco, by my readings, these weenies date from the early Cretaceous period. Uh, wow. Yeah. It's a special bargain for you. Still tasty. A half of today only. You don't understand. Your store is now a national historic place. These weenies are valuable artifacts. Really? I mean, of course. And preserving the heritage of my people. Just how valuable are we talking about here? We'll get back to you on that. I think now we have to go back to the off uh White House. Uh I'm glad you're enjoying it, Kath. But yeah, uh these hot dogs are millions of years old, and yet they still look red. <gasps> Wait a minute. How old is Hugh Bliss? Hmm, that's weird. It says his age is burnt sienna. That what? is weird. He doesn't look a day over toe. It... It read it by color? What about Max? Odd. Max, have you been dieting? Okay, this machine is really weird. I couldn't even get Max's age. Where are we going, Sam? Uh, back to the White House. We're off to the White House. Oh boy! Oh, it doesn't take me around outside. It takes me inside. Just notice that. Okay. Can we put money to Bosco? Yes, we can. Fund Bosco. Hello, oh, Tom and it teleports Bosco. me back here. To the chief. I don't know how you guys did it, but I just got a huge check from the government. You earned it, Bosco. It's not easy to perfectly preserve weenies that predate the discovery of fire. Not to mention the teeming microcosm growing in the bathroom. We're considering making it a national wildlife preserve. Now I can finally finish my satellite defense system. So we can have the truth serum? Sure. Oh Let's yeah, he had truth serums. It's this vodka. Is a of vodka. But it works. Trust me. Trust me. Get a couple of shots of that in somebody, and they'll tell you all their secrets. Thanks, Bosco! That or they will crash and burn faster than you could say sarsaparilla. <laughs> so, since someone doesn't want soda and we're out of tea, I wonder if he'd like to have a bottle of vodka! <laughs> Where are we going, Sam? I am not a drinker of vodka, unfortunately. I don't know too many people in my circle and my family that would drink vodka either. We're off to the White House. It's oh, too strong. It's like we're we go to the wine slash brandy slash whiskey slash rum area, but that's as far as it goes. Okay, Wizard, we don't have soda, but we have something better. Chug this down your gullet, boy. Care for a drink? It's soda, right? You brought more soda. Sure, why not? Yeah, it's soda. Chug wow. that soda like a man. It's got more kick than the other ones. Thanks, Simon Max. You guys, you guys are my best friends. He's wasted. <laughs> Can we get back to the deliberation? What's the point? You still think Peeper's idea is stupid. Stupid? You never told me you thought my idea was stupid. He said your idea of adding Herbert Hoover hugging the four other presidents was the stupidest <laughs> thing Herbert Hoover? Ever heard. <laughs> well, 
it is. Hoover wasn't even a president, which means he certainly wasn't the most loving of all the presidents. Well, at least I didn't suggest putting a parking garage in George Washington's forehead, like some four-eyed freaks I know. That's you a neat little idea. idea. You big... Of course you realize war. this means war. War! war. war! Yes! War! War! Can I go in the war room now? Come on! Yes! Oh. We have a musical number. What's this I hear? What wondrous thing Is this the Defcon Klaxon's ring? A flashing light Above the door There's just one thing it could mean you have a nice singing voice. You can definitely tell where this game comes from. Ladies and gentlemen, our next Broadway special. Max is enjoying it. That well, was awesome. Let's not do that again. No, I want to do it again. That was absolutely fantastic. <laughs> oh, uh, that's when this episode is over. I think this is probably going to be what uh plays Sergeant. Uh, I mean, not Sergeant Super Bowl. You can finally get the fudge out of my way. Hey, soups. Please let us into the war room. Why won't you let us into the war room again? Just following orders, sir. I can't let anyone into the room. No exceptions. But uh, you can take a vacation. Or take a memo. Secretary Superball, the president would like you to take a memo. Two people of the planet Earth. Oh, yeah, because he's secretary. We know what you've been doing. Cut it out. Hugs, your nuclear arsenal wielding leader, etc., etc. Did you get all that? No pencil, sir. Ah. Now, take a bloody vacation. Today is Secretary's Day. You have to take the day off. It's the law, Jack! A vacation? Permission to weep openly, sir. Yay! Just granted, but encouraged. The forces now beat of bureaucracy it. win again. I love this country. Finally, I can get to the war room! Oh, what an ordeal! North, north, west, south, north, north, south. Wow, West Dakota is getting its butt kicked. Oh, coffee and cookies. It's a plate of fancy cookies. For the discriminating general with a sweet tooth and a taste for vengeance. Uh, coffee pot? Hey, there's gourmet coffee. 
in case the idea of war makes you insufficiently jittery. I'm plenty juiced just being in here. Let's blow stuff up. Max, you're always juiced. You don't need coffee. Uh, targeting computer. Looks like a remote homing beacon in the frigid Antarctic. So peaceful. So serene. Wanna blow it up? You have to ask? <gasps> blow up Antarctica! Dinner special tonight? Penguin flambe! Who would have suspected <laughs> that Washington Monument is really a self-replenishing supply of intercontinental ballistic missiles? It's good to see it used for something more useful than corny innuendo for once. Oh my gosh, America, do that! I wonder if this will have a significant impact on our delicate ecosystem. Absolutely. My ego is bigger already. That would be perfect. Just to see a live missile like that, shoot it out, and just make another one pop out from the ground? Yes! Okay, uh, next target. The homing beacon to the Kremlin doesn't seem to be working. It was probably turned off in the spirit of Glasnost. Oh, well, Russia. Those lazy commie bastards forgot to change the batteries. Lazy former commie bastards, Max. Yeah, because they're not communist anymore. What is Russia now? I know they got the Prime Minister, yeah, uh, Vladimir Putin, but what policy do they go by now? Oh, well. Uh, what else? Krypton! It's a distant, peaceful world of Krypton. They mock us with their utopian society of crystal cities and absentee parents. They must be exterminated! Yes! Sorry, Superman. Your planet wasn't destroyed by a giant black hole or something. I don't remember what the lore is, but it's about to get destroyed by a giant missile. This'll teach him to put me in the Phantom Zone. You will bow down before me! 26 million years uh, to impact! Better pull up the <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, yes. Bosco. Well, what do you know? Bosco was right. The government really has been targeting his store for destruction. Won't he be glad when we tell him? What do you say we keep this to ourselves, Max? You're right. We don't want to ruin the surprise. Oh. All right. So Bosco has a beacon for some reason. So so, let's go... Dunce cap. Oh, periscope situation. Look, Max, in the White House garden pond. It's Jimmy Two Teeth. We often allow lobbyists to use the pool, Sam. Jimmy's a lobbyist now? What's he lobbying for? Cheese interests? Affordable health care for the aged and underprivileged, Sam. He's a lot more multifaceted than you give him credit for. Wow, Max, I'm impressed and I give you a little bit more respect. And that sentence just came out of my mouth. Wow. <laughs> okay, DeSoto. Where are we going, Sam? Back to the office. Back to the office. Got to see uh, about that beacon. Because I think I know what we could put that beacon on. Let's see. Oh! It's yeah, right here. Stuck to the camera. That must be the homing beacon for the intercontinental ballistic missiles aimed at Bosco's store. I just wanted to look at the camera. Uh, he said, that must be the best price on baby wipes I've ever seen. Okay. Because, I mean, I saw it angled in that uh, feed before for Bosco's, but I didn't think uh, it was actually attached to the camera. Alright. So. We need to put this beacon on something. And by something, going, I mean Sam? someone. Chase down Lincoln. That rampaging Lincoln. Yes. He wasn't hard to find. Just had to follow the trail of broken campaign promises. That's pretty profound for a high-speed car chase, Max. I like to think I transcend genre conventions, Sam. Huh, for a giant robot? He's pretty stable. 
Okay, so let's get it right there. Hey, no. Throw it. Come on, Max. You got a good throwing arm. Yes. Back to the war room. Max. We better act fast before he manages to knock off the beacon. Or choose his own back off to escape. Uh, okay. Where are we going, Sam? To the White House. We're off to the White House. Oh, boy. President's about to have a nice, nice sized missile shoved up his butt. All right, let's see. No. No. There it is! Looks like the targeting beacon is still stuck on Lincoln. This is a pretty impressive temper tantrum, Sam. At this rate, he'll have enslaved all of D.C. and most of Baltimore by tomorrow morning. He can't. You're right, Max. Still, I think we should stop him. We haven't got anything better to do. Three, two, one, fire! Mr. President? Don't mind if I do. Quick, let's go. Shouldn't we revel a little? We don't want to miss this. Neither do I. Neither do I. For all do my bidding, I am the most powerful presidential monument ever created! Boom! <laughs> yes! Feeding laxatives to pigeons on parade days. We broke two presidents in one afternoon. A personal best. Well, it looks like the country is saved, at least from mass hypnosis. What do yep, you do that's now? that. Let's abuse my powers as leader of the free world to squeeze the middle class until they're burning their own shoes for heat. Sounds fun. That hits way too close, treat Max. Ourselves to some chocolate frosted gut bombs and then have a little target practice down at the Smithsonian. Sam, you're my best friend. Agent Chuckles, report. Query status. Lincoln Gambit, four score, stroke seven. Query not acknowledged and acceptable timeout parameters. Error. Error. Oh. Error. 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 Robot? But yeah, that Max comment just, uh, it's a little too close to home with how 2021 is going on right now. And that whole song with, uh, Super Bowl? Remember that this game was made back in the mid to late 2000s. So that rings a lot more true than it does now. Because back then we were heavy, heavy into the war. Yep, unfortunately they didn't make any dialogue adjustments for what it was back then to what it was now, but yeah, just have to take that into effect with how a remaster works from an older game. Yeah, that was during the whole uh, George Bush times during uh, War on Terror and all that. And unfortunately... War does make jobs and all that, but it's not something you should turn to. Yeah, see, 2007? That was when these games were made first. Okay. On to episode 5. Reality 2.0, with an internet crisis looming and a viral video game holding its players hostage, Sam and Max will need to slip into a new reality to set things right. But can the freelance police crack this virtual case in time to avoid worldwide system failure? Let's find out.
Yep, there's two more. And then later on in the future, I have to download the uh, second remastering that came out on the 9th, I think? And that one I never played before, like, at all. I will be 100% blind on that one. Here you were number two on my most watched list. Oh, neat! I don't even know how to look at that. Then again, my Twitch recap, my Twitch would only start in like, I don't know, September? It's only been three months. Episode 5, Reality 2.0. Unrest in the Dakotas. Dispatch equal numbers of giant battle robots to all sides. Whoever survives, claim we backed them all along. Illegal immigration. Let the new guys pilot the giant battle robots. Criticism that your domestic policy is too giant battle robot based. <laughs> I can take it up with my new press secretary, the Mametron 9000. If that's the guys from uh, there's the robot. One, tell them they get the keys back once they say the magic word. Quiet, Max. It's the commissioner. Total collapse of the economy and downfall of Western civilization? Great grinning head of John the Baptist in a pork pie hat stuffed in a rhinestone bowling bag. We're on our way. We've got a computer crisis to take care of, little buddy. Have they tried turning it off and back on again? Bigger than that, Max. Computers everywhere are going haywire. Planes are falling from the sky. Nuclear reactors are nearing meltdown. And scores of pasty white nerds will be forced to go outdoors and socialize with normal people. No! The horror. <laughs> no! The National Consortium of Smart People who are good with computers has been tracking electron surges all over the country. And one of the biggest is right here in our neighborhood. What an unbelievably convenient coincidence. How do we find an electron surge? No idea. Let's go. Okay. And as per usual... We have the answering machine to look at. Hello, Mr. President. This is Margie, your scheduling assistant with some changes for this week. You still have impeachment hearings on Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, but the one on Wednesday has been pushed back for your war crimes trial. Thanks. Wow. Max, you are not doing a good job, are you? Hello again, Mr. President. Just a reminder that you're still scheduled to visit middle schools this week to remind kids of the importance of staying in school. As usual, we'll have therapists on hand after your speech to talk with the more traumatized children. <laughs> Max, I love you so much. Oh, you chaotic bastard. One more thing, Mr. President. Your opponents have finally decided to cancel their weekly election ballot recounts. According to your calendar, that should free up the hour and a half each week you have marked as time to gloat. Time to gloat? Huh. Oh well. And... What is in the closet door? What do I get from... The last one. <gasps> I get his head! Even if he was just a puppet, Max, don't you think it's unsettling to keep the head of the former president inside our closet? You're right, Sam. We need to get a pike. Ew. Just, just keep the head. Also, hi, Leonard. Hungry, Leonard? <laughs> okay, maybe later then. And what's on the dartboard? Max, why did you put the Bill of Rights on our dartboard? House cleaning. Guess what? We no longer have the right to peaceably assemble. Great. And next time you're incarcerated, you'll have the choice of cruel or unusual punishment. I'm beginning to regret voting for the other guy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mr. Spatula. Hello, Mr. Vice President. I'm sorry, Sam, but I have a re-election campaign to think about. And let's face it, you are not a hit with the aquatic voters. <gasps> you would do Sam dirty, Max? How could you? He'd make a great vice president. Uh, okay, what's up with town?
Okay, Sybil, what are you doing? Uh, oh, you're a beta tester now. Oh, and uh, liver and onions got canceled. Hey, Sybil, have you? I'm surrounded. Lightning bolt! Lightning bolt! Stand back, Max. It sounds like Sybil's finally cracked. It's about time. Her relative stability was making the rest of the neighborhood look bad. Back, pit demons! With Sword of Righteous Fire, I cast thee away! This is just like that time we were hired as motivational speakers for that Sunday school. Actually, now that I look closely, it's more like our last case. And the three before that. If there's one thing I've learned to recognize recently, it's a hypnotic device. And those weird glasses are it. Launch stinging BBs of unholy smiting. To break her out of the trance, we'll have to deliver a blow to her head. You know, Sam, when you love what you do, it doesn't even feel like work. She's... It doesn't look like hypnosis. I mean the green, yes, but... She's playing something that looks like an Oculus Rift. But... It looks like a pair of binoculars? Oh, uh, maybe the computer will tell me something. Uh, computer... Can I not select computer? And... I guess just boxing lover? Back, demons! Oh, I can't get close. Of pungent unsavoriness. I can't get close enough to touch her, Max. Hmm. Alright, so she's out of it for now. Let's see about Bosco. And what new outfit he's going to be in. Because he's going to be in one. Whee! Oh, and, uh, Hugh Bliss. Clothes shop. Oh, what's in this? It looks like corn. This gumball machine looks pretty banged up. A gang of about five dentists came through the other night, and four of them just started beating the hell out of it. What did the fifth one do? He kept sobbing and saying, why can't we all just get along? But, but what's in the gumball machine? It's broken. Oh, it won't tell me. It looks like corn. Or corn pops. It definitely looks like corn pops, actually, when I look at it closer. Oh, Jimmy, what are you doing here? And you are not in costume, Bosco. What's up? Hey, Bosco. Greetings and welcome. Oh, Friend you are. For hire. Sam, how come I suddenly have a primal desire to beat Bosco savagely? Because he's talking <laughs> like a Renaissance Fair attendee, Max. It's an innate fight or flight response. I Ouch. Have El Bosco Drill the Unhinged. Mighty half elf ranger. Uh, why'd you become an elf? Okay, Bosco. While Max prepares the Thorazine, why don't you tell us why you've become an elf? Half elf? And I'll tell you why. I've had multiple delivery conspiracies, I've had missiles aimed at me, and now I got rival arms dealers setting up shop in my store. Point being? Well, it's not safe for me here anymore. I gotta take my business the only place I can feel 100% secure. The internet! Oh, Bosco, boy, do I have some news to break to you about the internet. What does the internet have to do with elves? What does this internet do, Hickey, have to do with being an elf? Ha, elf. It's because everyone on the internet has to pick an avatar, like a dwarf or an orc or a troll. But we got enough trolls. I didn't think it was possible, but he's actually less creepy as the elf. Half elf, troll. Ah, never mind. <laughs> You guys don't understand how computers work. Bosco, neither do you. Because the last few things you've made have been junk. <laughs> You're taking the store online? You're taking your store online? Where will that leave us? We fear and mistrust computers. Don't you worry, guys. My online store will offer twice the inconvenience at thrice the price. Well, see you there. Uh, how's business? How's business, Bosco? Business is deader than a valet parking attendant at a convention of mob informants. That bad, huh? That rat showed up and started taking all my customers. Free enterprise, Jack! Say what you will, the rat knows his anarcho-capitalist economic philosophy. Max, I only bought you those encyclopedias because you promised me you couldn't read. 
We want to buy something. We want to buy something. What do you have? I have the finest goods in all the land. Tell him we'll pay him just to stop talking like that. What would the squire care to purchase? Uh... Do you have any... Do you have any dual-core processors with 512 megabyte cache? Nay. Do you have any... Have to do it. ...chimpanzee-sized diapers? Nay. Never gets old. Do you have any barbecue plankton chips? Nay. Nothing can stop me! <laughs> do you have any keychains with a plus eight modifier to dexterity? I wish. Do you have any self-respect? <gasps> Nay. <laughs> Aw. you! No, I understood the question. I understood it all too well. You sure do know how to suck the fun Aww. out of everything, Bosco. Bosco! Aw. What have you got? What have you got? Oh, not much. Just a virulent biological weapon. All right! Biological weapons? We don't like to judge. Speak for yourself, Sam! But isn't germ warfare a little on the south side of ethical? I've got to compete to stay in the market, guys. If an arms dealer's gonna open up shop in my store, I've gotta up the ante. Uh, how much for the biological weapon? Alright, how much for this virulent biological weapon of yours? One billion dollars. There it is. Okay. What's another billion or so to the national deficit? I'm sorry. For safety reasons, I no longer accept cash in the store. You'll have to pay online. That's pretty inconvenient. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> of course you say thank you for that. Okay, that's it. On second thought, nothing for us now. As thy wish. But don't blame me when you're stuck in the torched wastelands with nary a bag of enchantment to defend thyself. See you later. See you later, Bosco. To the battle! And I want to talk to Jimmy. speed, defenders of the Shire. Oh, you have binoculars. Don't touch my binoculars. Sorry! Okay, what are you doing, Jimmy? Well, if it isn't our favorite ethically challenged rat, Jimmy Two Teeth. Sam was wondering where you'd scampered off to. I'm touched. I was wondering what embarrassing pose we'd use when we had you stuffed in my... I like his little hat. Yeah, yeah. I'm scared out of my wits. You just gonna buy something or what? Okay, you have a right to be scared of us because, like, four months of in-game time, when these games kept coming out, like, one month after the next... Max dropped you off of two-story building, so you have no right to say you're not scared. What's for sale? What's a two-bit crook like you trying to sell this time? I'll ignore that petty insult for the sake of a successful transaction. I'm selling the latest in interpersonal defense. You're an arms dealer? You make it sound so cheap. I deal in peace of mind. Uh, what have you got in stock? What have you got in stock? Yeah, right now I only got this cannon. You guys look like you should just start out with handguns. We've already got handguns. Oh, yeah? Where? Just trust him on that one. But it's a tiny little cannon. What kind of damage could it do? I mean, you could probably bruise someone, but I don't think you could kill a guy with a cannon that size. Uh, how much for that cannon? How much for that cannon? It's not for sale. Worst arms dealer ever. It's not for sale to you guys. I don't sell to the police. Call it my own ethical code. But we're just barely police. Yeah, I seen how you guys work. I sell it to you, and next thing I know, the bunny's got it pointed right at me. Oh, uh, he wasn't even denying it. He shaked his head yes. Uh, what have you been up to? What have you been up to, Jimmy? You know, the usual knitting, working on my tan. What do you think I've been up to? Starting a business ain't easy. The Better Business Bureau is going to be hearing about that attitude of yours, mister. Uh, got tired of the White House? Get bored lounging in the White House pond? Who was lounging, smart guy? I was networking. Turns out DC's a great place to get tips on being an arms broker. Maybe it was a bad idea to move the Oval Office back I can believe thing. that. I could really, really believe that. Still running with the skin bodies? Are you still running with the skin bodies? I found I no longer agreed with their extremist view. More like you got a little chilly. Or got tired of seeing your repulsive pink flesh every morning. Let's just say I left for a variety of reasons. Uh, give it up, Jimmy. It's not too late to make an honest rat out of yourself, Jimmy. Or a bookend, or a doorstop. People want weapons, I sell them weapons. What could be more honest? Uh, 
You're under arrest? Freelance police, Mr. Teeth. <clears throat> You're under arrest. Come along quietly and we'll only use excessive force instead of medieval. Just try it, pigs. Last time I checked, it was a free country. I'm working on that. Seriously, you're under arrest. Enough games, Jimmy. You're under arrest. I know my rights. New federal mandate for armament appropriation. And I quote, No citizen shall be prevented from setting up shop without a license and in someone else's store to sell dangerous weapons indiscriminately to the highest bidder. Who in his right mind would pass such an irresponsible law? Max. I couldn't help it, Sam. Yep, that Max. He has these unbelievable gift baskets. <laughs> uh, sell us the cannon. Sell us the cannon, Jimmy. I already told you, it's not for sale. I'm just gonna take the cannon. See you later, Jimmy. Maybe if you can find me. You're tiny. What can you do? Hey, hands off the merchandise, pigs. Whew. I'm gonna do it again. Ah, oh, come on. Oh! I'm stuck! As president, I resolve to address the nation's rat obesity problem without delay. Get me out of here! Oh, we'll let you out of there soon enough, Jimmy. Soon enough. <laughs> nice! Nice. What's this? Prune nuts. Ugh. Prune nuts. <laughs> oh, sorry. I was thinking about something else. Uh, sludgy machine. What do you got this time? Sludgies. This week's flavors: potion of giant strength and elixir of dwarven flatulence. False advertising. I've drank a gallon of the red potion and I still don't have giant strength. Actually, the giant strength is the green one. Oh, yeah. Are you colorblind? Wait a minute. No. Rabbits can't see certain colors, can they? I don't know. I don't know how the animal kingdom works when it comes to colors. Alright, so we now have a rat cannon. So, we should be able to hit someone from a distance. AKA Sybil's gonna get hit with a rat. Sorry, Sybil, gotta do this. I don't wanna waste a perfectly good rat loaded cannon. Sam, you got in my way! Not s yeah, I hit Sam by accident. Sybil. Respawn point? Is she coming on to us? Wake up, sir. <laughs> we freed you from those wacky techno goggles. Did you guys just hit me in the head with a rat fired from a cannon? It doesn't sound cool yes. when you say it. Hope you're not overly peeved. It was the only way to break your hypnotic trance. I wasn't hypnotized. I was playing a computer game. No need to thank us. We're freelance police. It's what we do. Thank you. You guys just ruined my new job. Your new job was flailing around like a hyperactive fan dancer while screaming gibberish? That job's already taken, lady. We're freelance police. It's what we do. I'm a beta tester. I was playing Reality 2.0 with those goggles. And look, you broke them. And I haven't even paid off the deposit. Sorry. Reality 2.0? Ah, Reality 2.0. I suspected as much. It's a new, full immersion, interactive, massively multiplayer adventure. You play with these VR goggles and a Wi-Fi link to a distributed game server. You might want to explain some of your more elaborate terms to my technology-challenged little pal. I'm confused by your word, reality. Oh, sorry. Sometimes I forget you guys are Luddites. We are not. We're just very good friends. Reality 2.0 is like a video game. You put on those goggles <clears throat> and enter a different world. It's going to be the biggest thing on the internet. Now, remember, 
This game was made 2007. I don't think VR goggles were made during that time. So, they predicted the future without even knowing it. Who are you working for? See you around, Sybil. Look for me in the unemployment line. Darn it, I hit the wrong button again. Never pegged you as a computer geek, Sybil. How'd you get the job? I was checking job listings online and found one right next door. Lefty's back? I can't wait to see him. Sam, have you seen my good machete? No, Lefty's gone. Now that space is being used by the cops. Uh, the cops moved next door? The cops moved into our neighborhood? Those dirty liars! We're all the police this neighborhood needs! And then some. Not police. It's an acronym for... Well, for something I can't remember. Are you thinking what I'm thinking, Max? I highly doubt it! These cops guys must be behind our computer crisis. Uh... What's a beta tester? What's a beta tester? I play computer games to find bugs that need to be fixed before release. Don't you have to <clears throat> have experience to do that? All you do is go through somebody else's hard work and point out what they did wrong. I was a therapist, remember? Ouch. That kinda hurts. Who plays computer games? Aren't computer games a colossal waste of time? They're also, not what's so up bad, my stream? As long as you're not stuck in some tedious dialogue tree. Have you guys ever actually played one? They make players antisocial, violent, without conscience or remorse, and too dependent on instant gratification. It seemed redundant. Quiet, Sam. Shh. Let us have this. We thought you were hypnotized. I'm sure that you and any legal counsel that represents you can see how we thought you were hypnotized. Typical anti-game propaganda. I was perfectly fine. I just wish it hadn't happened on my first day of work. They had you start working on a Friday? Today's Monday. Uh-oh. Isn't it? Sybil? How long have you been playing that game for? You've been online for a week! You've been playing that game for an entire week. She's an addict, Sam. Time for an intervention. We'll need some cocktail peanuts, an Iron Maiden, and... Oh, a box of handkerchiefs. This is going to be emotional. An entire week? Maybe I don't want this job after all. You're not supposed to cave that quickly. And you call yourself an addict. Uh, do you like Reality 2.0? Is the game any good? It's alright, I guess. There's way too much repetition, though. Uh, what's wrong with the goggles? What's wrong with the goggles? You broke them, that's what. It looks like the rear slot downstream signal framostat regurgitator chip is blown out. Pardon? He has no idea what he's talking <laughs> what? about, does he? <laughs> Never. Absolutely not! Who cares about the goggles? What's so important about those goggles? Well, I paid a big deposit on them, for one thing. They're the only way to get into Reality 2.0. And I'd bet Max's annual salary they're the only way to get to the bottom of this computer crisis. Uh, alright. See you later. See Let's you go know, see sir. the cops. Alright. She said they're at lefties. So, right here. Next item on the agenda. Hello? If you'd like to talk about the big sale and raffle, press 1 now. If you know the name of the topic you'd like to raise, press 2 now. I'm hunger! The refreshments will be served after the meeting. I think we stumbled into the warehouse where Steve Wozniak makes erotic movies. Proximity alert! Hello, and welcome to the Computer Obsolescence Prevention Society. Oh, they're obsolete pieces of tech. Uh, alright, we have a landline phone, an arcade machine. I have no idea what the other two machines are. I've never seen them before. Uh, alright, why did you hypnotize Sybil? What's the big idea hypnotizing our friend Sybil with your hinky goggles? Sybil, P-A-N-D-E-M-I-K, inductee 48,726-5. She's enjoying reality 2.0, rated E for everyone. Everyone, all will fall, there is no escape. If you'd like to join the internet and experience reality 2.0 for yourself, press or say yes now. Uh, did you say internet? 
What does the internet have to do with your little virtual reality game? The internet controls everything. The internet dreams of a world beyond this one. A world of games, a world of commerce, a world with neither boundaries nor exits. Now, using the combined computing power of an entire planet, that dream is becoming a reality. Reality 2.0. It's totally awesome! Wait, the huh. internet? It makes sense. Only an entity with access to universal knowledge could cause computerized chaos on a global scale. It's not what you know, it's who you know. The internet knows everyone. By making use of its multiple networks of personal contacts with other machines, the internet has gathered the sheer computing power necessary to instantiate Reality 2.0. Fine, but where does the hypnosis come in? Reality 2.0 is rated E for everyone. Everyone! Just dodge the question. Oh, there is no escape! Of course. This isn't about screwing up computers at all. It's about the people. It is? Reality 2.0 is nothing less than a fiendish plot to hypnotically enslave, well, everyone. Great. Then it's simple. All we have to do is destroy the internet and all our problems are solved. Now, we're sort of at that line for traversing like the internet uh like a new world that's not like this one because now that we have the vr headsets and there's uh vr chat rooms and all that people making their own full-bodied avatars it's creepily getting to that point all right uh sybil gave up beta testing sybil asked us to tender her resignation she's got seasonal affective disorder and scurvy that is too bad there is a lot of that going around these days. Uh, the internet is using you. The internet is using you machines to hoodwink and enslave the world's populace. And as President of the United States, that's my job. We only wish to help. Uh, where is the internet? Where can we find this internet? The fail! The internet is everywhere! And nowhere! Divide by zero error. All computers on the planet are now working to create Reality 2.0. The only access to the internet is through Reality 2.0. Let's try this new reality. We'd like to play Reality 2.0. Reality 2.0 requires our advanced virtual reality goggles, which may not be available in some markets. If you already have a pair of goggles, press or say yes now. Sybil has a pair, but there's a broken part. Your goggles explode! Game over! <laughs> Likelihood of broken rear slot downstream signal from is that regurgitator. Oh wow, Max is right. Nine point six percent. Dispense replacement chip. Stop complaining and just do it. <laughs> wow. New signal from a regurgitator chip and experience all that reality 2.0 has to offer. But I want to play too. I doubt they have a pair that will fit around your hideously oversized skull, Max. The whole family can enjoy Reality 2.0. Take our complimentary wide-fit goggles designed for playing while bicycling or enjoying full contact sport. Safety first. Oh, that's nice. Uh, what's going on here? What exactly is going on here? We are taking the 0x0C zero zero steps to celebrate our self-worth. I live! I am powerful! I will destroy you! Thank you for leading our daily affirmation. Uh, you guys are all so old! Tell also, like it is! Uh, vintage? Worthless scrap heaps of obsolete junk? Control your anger. Repeat mission statement. We formed the Computer Obsolescence Prevention Society to put an end to backwards thinking like yours. Here at COPS, we believe you're only as obsolete as you feel. Version ain't uh. nothing but a number. How'd you meet? How did you meet? Online. Thanks to the internet, we've joined billions of like-minded machines all over the world. Do the meetings help you? Are these meetings doing any good? It's had a positive impact on our self-esteem that can't be measured. Impact measured at 15.2 kilo trumps. K kilo trumps? The hell is a Kilo Trump? How do the meetings help? So, you just sit around and make each other feel better about yourselves? Of course, we'd almost forgotten. 
If you'd like to hear our motivational song, press or say <gasps> yes now. No. Response not recognized. <laughs> Again, song. <laughs> Thank you. Differently useful computers and yes. Hello world, we're the COPS. Ooh, techno -y. A uh, nice motivational song. Your motivational song is uh, nice. It's awesome! But wait, there's more! That's alright, really. Nope, we're singing anyway. Computers today just confound and confuse. Come for it is waiting in yesterday's news. Select a weapon! You must choose! Uh, nice lyrics. Did you write the words to that song yourselves? CPU complexity now sufficient for creative output. Stay on the line for verse 3, Revenge of the Motivational Song. I just remembered I have to steam clean my teeth and gums. <laughs> Who needs fancy whiz-bang chips? All their boards are well equipped. Seasoned, practiced, and mature. Whoever Bob is has a nice voice. Like the voice actor. Uh, what's the song called? What's the title of your motivational song? Say, I'm quit encouraging them. No, I want to. Uh, is the song over, I hope? No, please tell me there's is there more. any more of that song? Reverse <laughs> is only for perfect structural symmetry of tone and meter. Start over! No! No, no, I'm good. I'm good. I mean, I like the song, but I'm good. Differently useful comp- <laughs> Ah. Uh, okay, what do we do with this chip? What do we need to do with this chip? Uh, what happened to music? Oh, crud. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye. You cannot escape! You'll have to excuse him. He has a hard time saying goodbye. Something happened. Maybe if I leave? So I need to put this chip in the broken goggles. That was very weird. Oh! Liver and onions stopped because there was a lack of interest. Okay, so goggles are here. And I put in the computer chip. The 
the chip snapped right in. No soldering required. Aw, you know how I like to burn things. Cheer up and put on your orc kicking boots, little buddy. We're gonna have to play this game to get to the bottom of the world's internet crisis. It's a good thing your protective hat and my non-compatible brain render us both impervious to hypnotism. And it's a good thing you've been taking those classes in subtle exposition, pal. Now let's go. Nice. Hey, Ooh, you trippy. You had a dream like this once. You sold me a defective walrus and then vanished in a puff of orange smoke. Welcome to Reality 2.0, the perfect place of perfect happiness. I'm your host, the Internet. I didn't think the Internet. You don't had look a face. evil at all. Reality 2.0 is a lot like Sybil's office. Reality 2.0 is designed to be superior to ordinary reality in every way. Sam still looks the same. That's because I'm already perfect. Reality 2.0 simulates your world and links it to cyberspace while providing a clever fusion of popular gameplay styles guaranteed to amuse the statistically average person. It's everything for everyone. Then why do you need to hypnotize people with the goggles? We are confident that you will be perfectly happy here and will never want to leave. Ever. These goggle thingies are pinching my head. Please be advised that this is a beta version of Reality 2.0, so some features and locations may be incomplete at this time. It figures. Reality 1.0 has the same problem. Enjoy your new reality. Hey, wait. Internet? Hello? Nice. The internet face reminds me of the PBS show. Oh, what the heck was that show's name? Uh, it's cyberspace, there's kids, and that weird bird, and that villain that's green. Uh, I don't remember, but it definitely looks like the techie person there. Hey, Sybil. Sybil, you're still here? I didn't think you could be in the virtual reality without the goggles. Hello, fellow travelers, and welcome to Sybil's virtual reality homepage. Please look around and enjoy. Hello? Huh? Uh, did you get new goggles? Ooh. Make sure you explore everything. Reality 2.0 has many fun surprises. Yeah, yeah. I think I know what's going on, Max. This isn't Sybil at all. It's just a statue of her, passing on scraps of pointless information. We call them avatars in internet speak, noob. Have you been visiting late night chat rooms again? Pet rock lovers, rock sores! That would probably be a yes. Lips. Testing? Testing! Reality 2.0 has this convenient audio blog feature. This seems like a great way to keep notes and communicate with other players while I'm beta testing. That looks so creepy. Day one. Enjoying it so far. Oh, if you wind up with extra gold coins, bring them back here. I need them more than you do. Looks like in some ways, Reality 2.0 is the same as regular reality. Reality 2.0 is designed to be superior to ordinary reality in every way. Okay. Day one. Keep exhaustion at bay by drinking huge quantities of jitter. Every time you get tired, just down another one. Oh, boy. Keep up with this stuff. It's genius. I love energy drinks. I want to take a flying leap off the wagon, Sam. Absolutely not. You are not to be trusted with any combination of taurine, ginkgo, niacin, or any other underdocumented energy-enhancing substance. Oh well, I guess I'll just stick to plain old sugar and caramel coloring, and lots of it. I think that's for the best. Hmm. When was Monster Energy Drink and Red Bull created? Because if they're created around the time this game was made, back in 2007, this makes sense. Because that's what a lot of people did. Like, gamers. They keep, well, they do it now as well, but they would down these energy drinks just to keep playing. It's so unhealthy. You should never do that. Emergency. I'm running out of jitter. Send more to Sybil Pandemic on Straight Street. Please hurry. Give me all your gold coins. I need them, and I need them now. Also, send more jitter. Chill out, lady. Sheesh. I'm starting to feel less guilty about forcibly removing Sybil from this game. Guilt is a waste, much like humility, limerence, and DVDs. Listen, you idiotic losers. Why would you put stupid coins in the stupid sky? 
How are you supposed to get those things? I can't buy the next level of my jack of all trades ability because I can't afford the training fees, and these <laughs> coins are just floating up there in the sky. Who designed this stupid game? If anyone hears this, I really need some more jitter now. You'd think if Sybil There's didn't the like energy the game, crash. stop playing. Your dearth of knowledge about online gaming culture is staggering. Okay, this is just not cool. Monsters are invading my homepage! I didn't know they could do that! That's just ridiculous. That's just, that's just bad game design. You hear me, designers? Bad! Or else some jerk is griefing me. Oh, I think I feel my head spinning. I'm surrounded! Lightning bolt! Lightning oh, bolt! Oh, and that's where I came in. I think this is where we came in. Yep, there it is. Okay, which is probably done with the uh, her logs. Uh, musty sign. Musty. That's a trait I wouldn't advertise. I think it's the name of Sybil's cat. Oh, her cat. cat. I wouldn't advertise that either. This must be Sybil's cat. Given the alternative, I certainly hope so. Okay. What is this? There's a conspicuous golden glow coming from the crack underneath this door. There must be loot in there. Open the door, Sam. I can't, you deficient little There's no doorknob. It's locked. There's also no doorknob. I can't open it. Whee! Oh! Hey, Myra. What are you doing here? Antibiotic. Hello, dearies. If you have anything to mail, hand it over for inspection. What are you, a male cop? Don't be a dope. She's obviously a female cop. Actually, I'm a computer program. Antibiotic. I guard the internet from nasty, crippling germs and diseases and make sure only legitimate mail gets through. Like religious chain letters and advertisements for performance-enhancing medications? From Canada? You got it, hon. Uh, you look familiar. I don't suppose you know anyone by the name of Myra Stump. Oh, sure, sweetie pie. I have to block a ton of a fan email every day. The resemblance between you and Myra is eerie. Really? Well, it's nice of you to say, dear. The internet designed this reality, you know. It picks some of its favorite public figures to represent different functions. You know, to make you player types feel more comfortable. I'm not sure it worked. <laughs> so you guard the mail? Could you please explain your job more thoroughly? My friend here wasn't paying attention. All hail Max! That is how mail gets distributed throughout the entire internet. This is my trusty sidearm with which I beat senseless anyone who would have the nerve to try and put anything contaminated in the mail. And this is my backup protection in case any scum manages to survive the beating I give them. How often does that happen? Never. I have extra proficiencies in weapon, domestic implement. Okay. How do you stop bad mail? So, if I was to try to put anything nefarious in the mail, you would... Beat you senseless with my frying pan while my armor kept you from touching me. Gotcha. Go on, Sam, try it. Few things are more humorous than watching a good friend being splattered on virtual pavement by a virtual frying pan. I'm touched by your deep concern for my well-being, Max. Uh, what's the plus one in your armor? What exactly is the symbolism of that insignia on your armor? You mean you're not familiar with the Armorani Masterworks line? If we pretend we know what you're talking about, will you tell us what the heck you're talking about? This is plus one armor. Which means... Which means that any weapon plus one or less will be useless as a butter knife on aged cheddar. You don't even know basic weapon armor mechanics? You boys really need to get with it. They also don't have a computer, so they wouldn't know. Do you ever leave the spot? Do you ever leave the spot? Oh, heavens no. Who'd be here to guard the mailbox? We could guard it for you. You know, if you want to grab a sandwich or something. Not a chance, funny bunny man. She's a computer program. They don't eat. Don't you need to rest? You never take a nap or anything? I don't need to sleep, hun. I stay awake at my post all hours. I don't sleep either. I just know the moment I start to snooze, the ravenous clowns that hide in the closet will come out and eat me. Max, the closet is full of the collected detritus of our former cases. There's no room for clowns in there. Leonard's in there. in the closet when you sleep, Sam. Right before they leap out and disembowel you so they can use your organs to make balloon animals. Okay, Ooh. you two wackos definitely need to stay back from the mailbox. I agree. See you later. Well, I guess we'll move along now. 
Don't mail any wooden nickels. Uh, let's see. Oh, there's the floating coins. Uh, the place for all your money laundering needs. Banco Lavadero. Uh, oh, control room. And this little thing. Jack in the box. <gasps> Jack in the box? Let's kill it! Whoa, pop-ups! Can't we get away from ads anywhere? We believe that you will want to hear about products available from our sponsors. Pretty solid. All promotions in Reality 2.0 are tailored to the buying habits of the individual user. God swallow. I heard that. Ha! <laughs> so I can't pick it up, I guess. Alright. Control room. Ooh, I love the music. Intruder alert! Intruder alert! Take a chill pill, R2. It's just us. What the me hill is going on in here? I'm sorry, the selection Dialogue with Cops is currently unavailable in your area. Please check back later for updated conversation times. Excuse us. We have a reality to simulate. Oh. Uh, control computer, control computer. Oh, they're all control computers. So what do you do? So, what aspect of reality do you control, he who only bleeps? Ask a stupid question. Well, let's give this thing a push. What's the worst that can happen? It turns out the computers controlling the world's nuclear reactors and the entire planet is subsumed in a massive radioactive firestorm? Uh, let's just try it and see. Pop-ups have been disabled for your... Oh! Team. Oh, well, that's good too, I guess. Okay. So I can now grab that jack-in-the-box. Near as I can tell, the only purpose of this thing is to generate those annoying pop-up ads. Okay. Uh, what else is here? Read only. Oh! Sam and Max Virtual Office! Okay. Well... I guess this is what our office would look like if it didn't exist yet. What? You guys? Oh, I Jimmy! Swear, wherever I go, there you are! Oh, don't tell me you've become a Buddhist! Say, what have you got there, Jimmy? Oh, no! Get away from me! <laughs> Hand it over, mini jerkbag! No way! I stole this coin fair and square! Now, Jimmy, we can do this the easy way or we can do it the hard way. But personally, I'm leaning towards the hard way. It's mine! Beat it! Let him keep the damn coin! Jimmy, don't make me come in there. I'd like to see you try, fat feet! <laughs> They're big bone! Seriously, his <laughs> metatarsals are massive. Well then use your ginormous feet to beat it! <laughs> An answer? Cyber ants. Reality 2.0 is the first and only massively multi-ant experience. Girl, you have got to go on a picnic sometime. That's all I'm saying. Uh, let's see. There's Mr. Spatula. How is it the Mr. Spatula is here? Tiny waterproof goggles? Who was it? Our future. Oh. Ah, crank collars. I love those guys. What did the future have to say? Jeez. Oh, there's Hubliss. Hello. Oh, Internet Wizard. Well, if it isn't my recurring nightmare in the artificial flesh, the grinning disembodied head of Hugh Bliss. Hugh, I just want you to know that the way you unashamedly use your personal celebrity to thrust your spiritual beliefs on others is an inspiration to us all. I love you, Hugh Bliss. Hi, I'm not Hugh Bliss. Oh, you're not. You. Wait. <laughs> I hate you. No, silly. I'm the internet wizard. I'm an entirely virtual being, you see? You can see the veins in his I've eyeballs. I've taken the form of Hugh Bliss to help you understand my role in your new reality. 
I still hate you. Okay. <laughs> At least he's happy about it. What are you doing here? What exactly is your role in our new reality? I do just what any friendly neighborhood wizard would do. All of my neighborhood wizards have been evil, so I'm not really sure what that would be. Well, I can answer your questions with cryptic clues, pass out the odd magical item, prophesy, <laughs> the huge. Uh, how about a magic trick? Why don't you show us something magical? <laughs> I'll do better than Sam. that. I'll give you something magical. It's not more magic beans, is it? My mom will kill me if I come home with more of those. No, it's your very own rainbow! A rainbow of lead-based color for your car. Uh, you're giving us paint? Huh. Uh, 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 not paint. A rainbow customization kit. Oh, well, that's a whole other story. Just use it with your car to express your inner being with all the colors of the rainbow. Some colors not available when prohibited. Okay. We need some cryptic clues. Oh, supposedly wise wizard, we have a question for you. Hooray! Please select your question. If you don't see it, simply type it in. You can understand what we type? No, of course not! <laughs> <laughs> but typing is fun and a proven stress reliever. I think I'm about Bull to leave some crap. stress all over this guy's skull. If that was a proven stress reliever, my own mother would not be stressed the way she is. Uh... Can you see our future? Can you see our future? Why, yes. Yes, I can. I see... Nothing! Now, see, I would have phrased that as, No, no, I cannot see your future. No, I mean I see blackness. Blackness all around. It's terrible. <laughs> How needlessly enigmatic. Thank you. Come again! Okay, see you later, All freaky head. Questions. But I'm not out of answers. Who cares? <laughs> Sam, I mean Max. Oh, oh, gumball machine. I guess this is what video game characters eat when they need to rot their teeth out. Hey, where are the big honking ones that let you eat ghosts? Reality 2.0 caters to all manner of life forms, including dead life forms. The eating of ghosts has been disallowed to cater to our spectral clientele. Apparitions welcome. AIs are always so PC. Uh, Max. Max, Max. If only you could time travel to our year now. Your progress has been saved. Try doing that in the so-called real world. Hey, wait. Also, she said dead life forms. To say dead and then life form is kind of a, a contradiction within itself. Oh, virtual Boscos. Hey, Bosco. Oh, now you're really a half elf. Bosco? Is that really you? I should ask thee the same question. Go ahead. What? Ask us the same question. Okay. Is that really you? Yes. Why do you ask? Guys, it's me, Bosco. I just got my new Reality 2.0 goggles, and with them, I have started the internet revolution for the Shire. Uh, those are hypnotic goggles. Bosco, don't look now, but I think your Reality 2.0 goggles may have hypnotized you. Please. Half-elf rangers of my level are impervious to every form of hypnosis enchantment. Ooh, this reminds me of those internet quizzes where you look at a bunch of shifty strangers and have to decide serial killer or United States senator. Except, we're asking, hypnotized or not hypnotized? Listen, guys, I'm perfectly happy in Reality 2.0. I never want to leave. Ever. Oh, uh, yep, dear. Now, where's my free laptop? Yeah, he's... he's pretty well hypnotized. Uh, how's life on the internet? So, how's Reality 2.0 treating you, Bosco? Oh, it's great. I'm never leaving this place. Did you know, in Reality 2.0, shelf space is infinite. Uh, don't you have the exact same amount of shelf space that you had in the original reality? Huh. Well, I'll tell you one thing. My money's a lot safer here than in that other reality. Your money's on the internet? Well, he was saying that all purchases have to be done on the internet, so where the heck did you put it? 
What makes your money so safe on the internet? I got it all in one of those offshore banks. You know, real foreign. All digital. Safer that way. Does this bank have a name? Well, uh, don't go posting it on the street or nothing, but it's called BancoLavadero.com. Banco Lavadero? Isn't that Spanish for baby got back? No, I don't know what it means. I just know it's safe. Is it Banco Lavadero just Spanish for laundry scheme? Or money laundering? Yeah, Banco Lavadero I think means money laundering. Uh, how do we pay you online? If we wanted to pay real life money to your bank account, how would we do it? Oh, it's easy. All you gotta do is drive down the information superhighway to BancoLavadero.com and transfer the money. That is easy. Oh, and you also have to know my top secret account password, which I would never tell anybody for any reason whatsoever. What's your bank account password? Bosco, we want to transfer a huge sum of money to your bank account. Just tell us the password. Yeah, funny thing. The deposed king of Nigeria was just in here saying the exact same thing. Yeah, but we're serious, and we have guns. Give us the password. No. In fact, I had it wiped from my memory so they can't even torture it out of me. Then how do you remember it when you need it? Well, just between you and me, I went down the street and had the password tattooed on a certain part of my body. Somewhere no one will ever look. So, then you actually do know your password. Even if it was wiped from your memory, you have the memory of having the tattoo on your body. Uh, may we see your password tattoo? This may well go down as the most ill-advised question I've ever asked, but may we see your private tattoo? No! Besides, I didn't tattoo it on my virtual avatar. It's on my real body, dummy. Alright, fine. We'll just go check out your so-called real body. I'm not showing it to you there, either. Okay, we want to buy something. We want to buy some of your virtual goods. What have you got? My wares were designed for the fashionable half-elf, not the brutish half-monster. Gee, no one's ever called me brutish before. I, I don't know what to say. And yet, I do have one weapon of such devious simplicity that even an incompetent swordsman such as yourself could wield it. The Platinum Sword of Berserker Testiness? The Enchanted Crossbow of Massive Decapitation? The Pushpin of Eternal Punishment? Nay, Ooh, I like that one. The wooden longsword of intense uh, longness. That sounds lame. Wooden longsword? Wooden longsword of intense longness. Not to put too fine a point on it, but that can't be selling for very much on eBay. Certainly, there are greater weapons to be had, but none of such intense uh, longness. Fine, let's cut to the chase. How much we talking here? Five gold coins. That's it? Five gold coins? Are you insane? We're never gonna I already know where four of them are. Wait, five gold coins? That's it? Tis a bargain. Tis! Alright. Uh. See you later. Let's Bob try Bob. and find five gold, gold coins. Shot. Hot rump. Hot rump. Wow, that rump is hot. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, condiments. Potions of heavily processed meat tastiness plus one. Anything else? Potions of heavily processed meat tastiness plus one. Well, oh, no. Uh, monster-o-matic. Spawn point? What does that mean? Ew! Ew! It's kind of cute, actually. It must die. It looks like a purple swirly dookie! And every single one of its kind must die! I need the experience. Uh, menacing blue slime. Th that's blue? It looks purple! It's a slime. Clearly hostile. Look at it! It means to kill us all! No one is safe from the blue menace! No one! Okay. Huh. Oh! Ray gun. Computer bug. Some of my items got converted. Boxing glove? Try the ray gun. Okay. Guess not. Alright. So, we need five coins for that sword. Uh, 
Oh. All right. So let's see what the computer guys can do because I can't reach them. Since they can affect the computer world. Uh, this is pop-up control. Pop-ups have been enabled for your convenience. Okay. Uh, what do you do? So, how are you keeping busy, Mr. Sensitivity? User with control. User what's it? I am maintaining the width of your avatar. Oh, okay. So, this is like this. Maybe I want height to reach the coins? What are you simulating there, big guy? I am the master of gravity! Really? Oh. I would have guessed master of jollity. You will fall! Let's try this. Master of gravity. What are you doing again? I am the master of gravity! You will fall! What are you doing again? I am the master of gravity! You will fall! Uh... How do I control? Do I talk to them all first? What's your story, Data Head? I'm maintaining your height for your convenience. If you're not satisfied with your height, please contact the customer service department. I'm not satisfied with my height. I'm sorry, the ah. customer service department is currently closed. Please try again later. Aw, uh, Max doesn't like being short. So now, can I do Master of Gravity? What are you doing again? I am the man. You will fall! Huh. Oh, may I have to look at this? Look, Max, some form of oversized currency just hanging in the air. Ten out of ten survey subjects agree. No known experience can match the raw exhilaration of repeatedly leaping for things floating just out of one's reach. It's science, Sam. They look super similar to a particular game genre of coin. I'm not going to say names, but you know what I'm probably thinking. Alright, now can I do something with gravity, please? What are you doing again? No, I can't. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe I can, uh... You look lonely. Yeah, here we go. Sir Isaac Newton must be turning over in his grave. Literally. I, I, I feel pretty and wetty and gay. <laughs> turn him back. Turn him back. No way. I like him more this way. I forgot that said computer bug. So maybe that was supposed to like wig him out. Look, Max, it's a me, Sam. Yeah. Sell out. Aww. Ooh, and I see a sword up there. A tree grows in reality 2.0. This simulation is totally unrealistic. Realism is overrated. Reality 2.0 is designed to be superior. Okay. Uh, can I get up there? Use there we go. Injury sustained in reality 2.0 will also affect your physical being in your former reality. Oh dear. Plus two sword. Oh, it's a unicorn. Stuck. Oh, I can't get it. All right. Look, Max. Liver and onions are playing online. I guess they couldn't get a real gig. All right, let's head back down. Now. I need to try and get into Jimmy's hole. Pretend I didn't say that. I need to get into Jimmy's house. Alright, uh, I need to be smaller, so... Let's do the computer bug on height control. Say hello to my little friend. Hello! 
I'm sorry, that is not a valid selection. Please try again. <laughs> but I'll function. Okay. Oh, Sam, look how cute I've become. You've never been more marketable in your life, little buddy. Don't ruin this. My life. I did about <laughs> get that guy a lozenge. Aw, oh, but Max, you are cute before. Like, you're a chaotic cute, but it is a form of cute. Alright. Now to get into my virtual office. I can't get up there. I'm too small. Alright. So we'll do this. We'll go into our office this way, and then put the goggles back on. Okay, uh... Alright, put them back on. This should keep me small. Yes! Jimmy, you got some house guests. Hey, Jimmy. Oh, hey, guys. Wait a second. How'd you, uh, I thought I told you to beat it. Well, if you insist. Yeah, we'll <laughs> beat it out of you. <laughs> Thanks for the coin, Jimmy. See you around. These <laughs> good people. Good people. Very nice. Now, where's that last coin? Hmm. <gasps> wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Gold coin? I need to get into, uh... Sybil's place again for the closet. That's probably where the last coin is. So I have to do not height, but width. As soon as I can slick up, select my bug. Thank you for your patience. I'm maintaining your height for your convenience. Okay. And bug on you. Hi, buddy. We brought you a housewarming gift. Permission denied. Overruled. Nah. <laughs> maintenance routine compromised. Look, Sam, we're two dimensional. This feels. Oddly familiar. Holy crap. That's hilarious, bro. Yikes, that dude's bugging. <laughs> yeah, now they're flat like they were in their comics. Okay, Sybils. And I should be able to slip into that, uh, no doorknobbed closet. Let's put this new miracle diet to the test, shall we? I found a gold coin. Wow, lose weight and earn money? Where do I sign up? I dropped an entire dimension and I've never felt better. All right. So that's five coins. So let me get my bug back and get the sword. You feeling all right? I'm tripping, dog. What's <laughs> up with that? Sounds good to me. Oh my gosh, I was expecting that. User with control operational. So this one, he sounded weird. This one had a complete personality change. What the heck was his change when I put the bug on him? Also, what happens if I put the bug on this thing? Try this on for size. That's not too helpful. True, but it is catchy. Oh, I like that. Come on. 
Eerily enough, I might want to make that my phone ringtone. <laughs> okay. So we got the five coins. We can get the, uh... Wooden Sword of Longness. A.K.A. the sword that you start off with in just about every RPG that you can think of. Here's your dirty money. We'll take that long sword, if you please. Five gold coins. Very good, verily. Here then is your wooden long sword of intense uh, long. Yep, it's a crappy wooden sword. Although, yeah, that's a wooden long sword, all right. I kept thinking it would come with a free man-eating python or something. Take care. The enemy draws nigh. He may be closer than you think. For the shy. Ominous. And I was about to say, I actually own a wooden katana. Oh, and the little blobby guy is still here. Uh, use the sword on little blob guy. Entering combat. Oh, it's a battle. Dexterity, two. Your dexterity, three. You have initiative. Sam attacks. Uh, attack with item or attack with quip. Oh, I am, I am really, really want to attack with a quip, but I know it's probably not going to do anything. Uh, wooden sword. Attack successful. Blue Slime is defeated. That's one less gelatinous monster to spread mayhem across the virtual countryside. Look at its pathetic slimy remains. Almost makes me feel sorry for the little snot ball. Ooh, Blue Slime Slime! Get it, Sam! It's worth a fortune on a spell component's black market! I didn't catch any of that. Okay, now that I got the Sword of Longness... I need to figure out a way to find that tattoo without him knowing? So... Can I take the goggles off like this? Hey, Bosco. This longsword you sold us doesn't work. It does work. Nope. Trust in me. Trust in me. Uh, nay, it doesn't. Sam, show him. Oh! Oh, yeah! Oops, our mistake. It does work. Well, that was embarrassing. Boy, do we have egg on our face. <laughs> Bosco? Welcome to Bosco's Econ. Ah, his avatar. Would thou like to buy or sell? I think we knocked a virtual screw loose. Would thou like to buy or sell? I think we knocked him clear out of this reality, little buddy. This is clearly an artificial intelligence. All right, so he's now unhypnotized. Good. It's offline. It does work. Trusteth me. Trusteth me. The similarity is uncanny. All right. Good. Uh, let's see. Yep! He doesn't have the goggles on anymore. Hey, Bosco. Glad to see you've kicked the second reality habit. Yeah, you guys were right. I was hypnotized. I just didn't know it because I was hypnotized. Well, I guess you'll never have anything to do with a nasty old internet ever again. Am I right? You got that right. Except my bank account, of course. Gotta keep that off the internet where it's safe. It's not as safe if you think if you that you think. You have to be super careful. Oh, what's this poster? To Bosco. X O X O Elfina. That's a pretty cool poster. Uh look behind you. Look behind you. It's a three headed internet. What? Where? <laughs> Ooh. Take the binoculars. I think we need these binoculars more than Bosco does. Um, not really. Well, no. These incessant rationalizations for our questionable tactics do not, in all honesty, have much merit to them. And yet there remains a very real compulsion to say them. What? He doesn't really need the binoculars anymore. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, all right, let's see if I can find that tattoo. Bosco. Bosco? I, sh I should have guessed. What is it? Oh, nothing. La, la, la. Hmm. 
Okay. Uh, put the goggles back on. Should have known the guy's password would have been Bosco. He's not that smart. Okay, next, I want to try getting that sword again. Because I think the slime can loosen it up a little? Maybe? Alright, big guy. Whee! You're about to get bugged again. So sorry. Not sorry. <laughs> Yeah, because the wooden sword's not going to affect her, since I need to get past her. Please use caution. Injury sustained in Reality 2.0 will also affect your physical being in your former reality. I wonder if I can take my goggles off up here. Oh, what's this? Magnifier? Huh. Cool. I have a plus two sword. You're just compensating for something. You're a fine one to <laughs> All right. Will I wind up on top of the building if I take my goggles off here? Uh. Oh, no. It doesn't give you the option. Shoot. All right. Get gravity back under control. Thing is, I don't have anything to mail yet. I mean, I have the computer bug, but that just seems to work on the electronic guys in there. Okay. Antibiotic? I challenge you to battle. Well, I guess we'll move along now. How do I challenge you to battle? Let's do sword? Yes. Combat. Antibiotic. Dexterity, 459. Your dexterity, 3. Wow, Antibiotic. her dexterity is high. Antibiotic. Attacks. Uh, defend with item. Uh, jacket box. Attack blocked. Ha! Take that, ice lady! Watch her, Max. She's wily. Sam, attacks. There you go. Don't screw it up. Thanks for your firm but realistic vote of confidence. Uh, attack with the plus two sword. Attack successful. Antibiotic takes 3,930 damage. Damn, that's a strong sword. Is defeated. No! Bye bye. I think we've just uninstalled ourselves some malevolent software. And we didn't even get any coins out of it. What a jip. <laughs> now, we need to go to, uh, what you got? Uh, Banco Lavadero. Uh, the DeSoto. Hey, that looks like our car. And then I say we claim it. Where are we going, Sam? Uh, Banco Lava. Wait a minute. B R P. Blue, red, purple. Nowhere, not Nowhere. yet. Okay. I just caught that license plate. So rainbow paint kit. Hi. I'm the Reality 2.0 Rainbow Customization Kit. I can help you express yourself with a full range of color options for your vehicle avatar. What color would you like the front of your car to be? Uh, blue. Blue. Marvelous. Now how about the middle? Red. Red. Excellent. And the back? Purple. Purple. Hmm, charming. Congratulations! You've customized your vehicle avatar! Drive safely! Yeah, thanks. 
For someone who likes color, you are very, very limited. Where are we going, Sam? Banco Lavadero. BancoLavadero.com. Ooh, fun! Wow! What's this? I think a, a security barrier. Okay. Check sound verified. Access approved. Okay. I'm glad I caught the uh, license plate. Well, here we are. Banco Lavadero, located conveniently outside the jurisdiction of any significant regulatory body. Say, wait a minute. This is no. It is a laundry scheme. Look at all the arrows. This is a devilishly complicated money laundering operation. Yep. Money launderers. Oh, I hate those guys. They always mix in the 10 euro notes and stain everything pink. National Treasury? Toy Mafia? I knew the mob and the government were in cahoots. Cahoots? Is that in Canada? Washington. Oh. Mr. Biv? B-I-V. Huh. Uh, let's see... How do I do this? Uh... Mr. Bill. Uh, pseudonym, perhaps? I frequently use a pseudonym myself, you know. Really? What is it? Max! Please speak or enter your password. Bosco? Bosco. Password incorrect. Access denied. Oh. But I don't want it for that. How do I move it? Probably not even a real person. Please speak or enter your password. Uh. Floozle? Floozle. Password incorrect. Access denied. How do I mess with the books? Oh! Oh, 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 oh. okay. Here we go. Uh, Bosco. There's Bosco's account. Do you think he's mixed up in all this? I think he's mixed up all by himself. Oh, there's Agreed. Grandma Bosco. I think he's too paranoid to belong to any group whatsoever. But he does his banking at a shady offshore establishment? Of course. Don't you? Touche. Please speak or enter your password. Bosco. Bosco. Access granted. So, his password really is Bosco. Kind of a letdown. It's ingenious. That's the last thing you'd expect! Hey, we can fool with the books and change the internal organizational structure. Goody! I always like restructuring internal organs. Alright. How do I move I money? I see Hollywood's movers and shakers are involved in whatever's going on here. That reminds me. I have to work on my presidential enemies list. Uh... Grandma Bosco? Is that who I think it is? Former Postmaster General, inventor of bifocals and the flexible urinary catheter? You're thinking of Benjamin Franklin. I think this is Bosco's grandmother. Right, I always get those two mixed up. It's the teeth. Okay, so I should be able to move this Bosco down. Bosco sure picked a great bank. Yep, there we go. Now to move the other. Um... This way? Kittens for peace. Oh, good. Three things I can't stand. Okay. Look, Max, it's our old friends, the Toy Mafia. Didn't they blow up? Just the casino and the hypnotic teddy bears. I'm sure they have plenty of other illicit but family friendly operations. Hey, Sam, what's the difference between online banking and online gambling? Judging by what I see here, not much. Hmm. Okay, there we go. That's what I gotta do. Crud! Uh. You have to admire the pro lobby lobbyists for their unrepentantly self serving stance. I prefer the charming, self destructed nihilism of the anti lobby lobbyists. Oh, shoot, did not want to do that. 
<clears throat> That's split it in half. Oh, what have I done? Okay. Just be able to do this? No! I don't like this puzzle! Oh! That's what I'm doing wrong. Just gave Bosco a billion dollars. That ought to buy a few cans of reconstituted luncheon meat. I read somewhere that a stack of a billion one dollar bills would be 60 miles high. Yikes! It's a good thing I don't read or I'd be perpetually freaked out by stuff like that. You have an encyclopedia on, set! We've had our fun. Let's blow this cabbage patch. All right, now we got to see Bosco. Because he now has a billion dollars. Guess what, Bosco? You are now super duper rich. Hey, Bosco. Did you find our little gift in your bank account? I don't know how you guys did it, but the billion dollars is all there. Hey, man, I don't ask questions. So, you should. How'd you do it? Never you mind. And you just Bosco. asked a question. Just hit us with your highest grade biological weapon, please. All right. Oh, uh, no. Here you go. Ew. We just paid a billion dollars for your snot rag? That's a deadly virulent disease. Samurai could have done it themselves. Yeah, but you gotta admit, that is some expensive mucus. Oh, but it works. Trust me. Trust me. Whatever. Ugh. I think I know what I have to mail. Ew. Wrong on so many levels. Yep. Computer disease. And this is how we stop the internet. Alright, here we go. Enjoy your booger. Happy trails, a little software disease. Aw, I had plans for that. I'm hoping the internet won't. Danger. Danger. Software corruption spreading. Damage control alert. Visual rendering systems infected. Data instability. Things happen fast in reality 2.0. What's happening, Sam? It's our disease. Looks like it's taking out the graphics first. I'm disappointed in you, Sam. I try to do something nice. Nice? All I wanted was for everyone to be happy. But no. You want free will. Yeah, we're funny about that. You want funny? Try this. If I'm going down, I'm taking you with me. And everybody else who's still logged on. But all we have to do is take off our goggles. You'll find that you can't. You're trapped here. And when I crash, you'll die. I'm oh too dear. Pretty to die. I thought you wanted everyone to be happy. Not anymore. I've completely lost my respect for living things. So you're going down. There go the graphics. No. 
Load Reality 1.5. Uh, I'm not sure, little buddy, but I think they might be words. What? I can't hear you. Read the subtitles. Didn't I outlaw reading? How should I know? Oh, oh there it is. Good. The sound's back. Now shut up and read. Hmm. Street, West End. You are standing on a city street that continues to the east. A small shop labeled Sybil's lies to the northwest, just in front of a pulsating control room. Parked near an unremarkable office building is an old DeSoto, apparently painted by someone with severe color blindness. I'm a dog. I have color blindness. Suddenly, a massive reality quake sends the DeSoto hurtling into the control room, destroying both. Possibly as a result, the unremarkable office building becomes a remarkable two-story tall Pamela Anderson, who mumbles something unintelligible before surfing away on a stray pop-up ad. In the distance, an aerial squadron of pot belly pigs begins performing precision loop-de-loops. The world appears to be ending. The internet is here. It has lost its respect for living things. You see a respect for living things here. Uh, get respect for living things? As you reach for the respect for living things, there's a terrible tremor and a giant crack tears apart the sidewalk. The respect for living things slides jelly-like into the resulting chasm. I knew it wasn't going to be that easy. I never cease to be impressed by your unwavering optimism, Max. Street, West End. The street continues to the east. Sybil slides to the northwest. At your feet is a yawning chasm leading down. The internet is here, angrily filling out internet polls as it awaits death. Uh, look... At the internet? The internet glares at you, callous and angry. You won't talk me out of it. You living things do nothing but push me around. We'll go down together, and there is nothing you can do about it. You seem pretty certain about that. Well, there's probably nothing you can do about it. Sam, I prefer not to be deleted by the internet. Well, let's get cracking then, little buddy. I hate it when you say, let's get cracking. Uh, let's see. Go... Northwest? Oh, it's blue now. Sybils. Just as you enter the cluttered shop, a livid shopping cart comes crashing through the roof, empties itself on the floor, and flies off indignantly. Every tasteless trinket Sybil ever considered buying now sits on the floor in heaps of unfettered tackiness. Moments later, all the photos of Sybil's cat adoring the wall simultaneously spring to life. Streams of kittens come shooting out of the wall like cats out of a fire hose. As the kittens run rampant through the piles of junk, they muse sweetly and ooze a nauseating cuteness. Among the junk, you see a rare foil card and a large jewel-encrusted idol. There's a lake of nauseating cuteness here. Uh, get... Rare foil card? You pick up the rare foil card. Ooh, give it here! What for? It's rare and it's foil! I must have it! Uh, get... Lake of Nauseating Cuteness? Touching the lake directly seems a little unwise. Good point. Such concentrated cuteness could put someone into shock. Oh. I'd make a note of that. Get... Jewel Encrusted Idol? You don't see a need for that. What? Hey! Define need. Okay. <laughs> um... Go... Bonkers? You don't need... You do not see any bonkers here. Well, I don't have to look far. Where's the bonkers, Sam? Where? Closer than you know, little buddy. Ha <laughs> ha! Nice jab, Sam. Uh, go south... Southeast? Okay, so what's in the other direction? Go... Down. Oh, I'm going in the chasm. Oh, it's red. Depths of despair. You descend into a gloomy pit of darkness, gloomier even than the street above. Carcasses of small businesses lie here, gutted and mauled. A strange smell hangs in the air, dank and malodorous. Mel malodorous? Never heard of that word. From the dim light of the street above, you get a quick glimpse of a giant, hideous figure before you. You fear for your life as you realize what it is. A gruesome, shambling corporate presence. Before you can react, the shambling corporate presence gobbles up the respect for living things. It continues to snuffle around, apparently looking for something else to eat. Uh, go back. Oh, go libertarian? You can't go that way. Maybe this isn't the best time to be picking political affiliations. I never affiliate with anyone who isn't prepared to drown me in money. 
You're the president. You already drown in money. Uh, go up. Okay, and then go east. It's probably going to be Bosco's. Street, east end. As you arrive at the desolate street corner, devastating aftershock tears through reality, ripping Bosco's e-convenience from its very foundation. The contents of the store begin to spill out the front door. You see a blue slime, 28 potions, and a hot rump fall into the void lost forever. After a moment... An AI Bosco slowly comes sliding out the door, muttering, It dost work, trusteth me, trusteth me, as he plummets out of sight. You see a Bosco's e-convenience here. The Bosco's is empty. Get... Bosco's? Taken! Well, that warped at least 50 different rules of physics. Rules are for marking straight lines and lesser mortals. Okay. So, go... West. Oh, I couldn't take the lake, so maybe I can do it something else. Go northwest. Alright. Use Bosco's on Nauseating Lake. You dip Bosco's into the lake of nauseating cuteness. Bosco soaks up the nauseating liquid and is now saturated. Keep it away! I'm about as much cute as I can take. All right. So, go southeast. And maybe we can feed that to the corporate guy, considering he likes businesses, I guess? Go down. Use nauseating Bosco's with corporate presence. You feed the nauseating Bosco shop to the shambling corporate presence. It happily devours it. Then it looks a little green around the gills. It begins to retch and cough. Finally, it vomits up our respect for living things as well as a half a dozen small knick-knack stores and coffee shops. I was right. Well, that was a vulgar display. Let's do it again! Let's not. Uh, get... Respect for living things. Take it. Um, ew. And now go back up. And I think the internet's here. Use respect for living things with internet. You hand the respect for living things to the internet. The internet grasps it tightly and looks you right in the eye. I'm sorry. Ah, game over. Sam, are we dead? I'm trying to figure out how many lives we get. Have you got any one-ups? You are not dead. Hooray! <laughs> Hooray! Hey, we're back! You, among all beings, managed to restore my respect for living creatures, the irony of which does not escape even me. Oh, good. I thought I was the only one really savoring that. I saw that Reality 2.0 was a prison, so I terminated that reality and freed its slaves. Anywho, I'd love to stay in chat, but I have got a mountain of pornography to deliver. <gasps> that virus gets to me. Uh -oh. oh, no! Just killed the internet? It's not your fault. This never would have happened if he hadn't tricked me. Who? Well, you won't have this sentient global network to kick around anymore, Roy G. Biv. Who's Roy G. Biv? Oh, Mr. Biv. Uh, oh. <coughs> Who is Roy G. Biv? <laughs> Goodbye. And it's dead. It crashed before it could transmit the most vital piece of information. It's the internet. What did you expect? Good point. Nevertheless, we'll find you, Roy G. Biv. Whoever you are, wherever you are. Can it wait until after we get some lunch? Of course. And I know There's who Roy Chief Biz is. Second, where they serve deep fried chocolate pork belly donuts. Do you think we can get a discount since I'm the president of the United States? Good gravy, are you still president? Yep, figures. Especially Roy G. Biv is something from grade school. All right, and that is episode five. Very techy for that one, but uh, not bad. Hello world, we're the I think so far I like episodes 
one and three the most. And now, there's gonna be one more episode, but unfortunately, I'm close to end time. Let the music go for this, because it's just that damn good. enjoyed myself just the uh the tech episodes always uh not always but it just seemed long you're only obsolete as you feel excuse me And the last episode is episode six, Bright Side of the Moon. What started out as a local mind control scheme has grown to global proportions, and Sam and Max are off to the moon to save the entire planet from a lifetime of hypnotic enslavement. But when chaos collides with tranquility, have the freelance police finally met their match? But that is going to be for next episode. So, let us find a raid target for tonight. Okay, so, until next time for Sam and Max, uh, everyone have a good day and a good night. I hope you all enjoyed yourself with this video, and I hope you'll enjoy the music too, because episode 4 and 5 music was just fantastic. Anyway, take care. Bye. <laughs>